there was so many people that were telling us along the way this wouldn't work. And I thought about those people and just realizing that so many people were counting on us to fail. Was there a moment leading up to this where you're like, this ain't gonna happen. I, I, I dreamt too big. Was there ever a moment? I was like, wait a second. So many people have been asking me what companies behind this. And so all of these guys think a VidCon or a fourth wall or a Discord is putting on this event that has tens of millions of dollars in venture capital. They don't realize that it was two kids in a garage. We're sitting here with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Icon, founder of Creator Fest himself. Icon, what's up? You know, man, I uh, we just finished the first ever Creator Fest and I am pooped, but I'm also filled with incredible gratitude because this was one of the most amazing weekends of my life, hands I, down. I, I've been following your story on uh, on Instagram and it's been like all leading up to this. I'm just curious, what was going through your mind before you went to sleep the night before Creator Fest? There was so many people that were telling us along the way this wouldn't work. And I thought about those people and just realizing that so many people were counting on us to fail. And we've just unfortunately let them all down because this thing was a massive, massive smashing success. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was probably it. Was that like, well, like we were, we were in this moment where it was like, um, it did this live up to the expectation? And at the end of the day, I think there's this like sense of control you lose where it's like, okay, you know, like no matter what happens, come or come, or come tomorrow, uh, we sold 200 tickets in the last week. And that means momentum is hitting and momentum doesn't just stop, right? It keeps going. And so if the momentum came in that last week with that huge ticket rush, that means that like people are ready to keep going. And I think we really saw that here in the networking mixer. We saw that here in the party and, uh, and then especially here through into the main event. So um, that, was, that was kind of what was going through my mind was that like what's next before we even started. Was there like... By the way, Patrick at David, uh, choose your enemies wisely. That's one of the things that he let drive him. That idea of not just where do I want to go, yeah. but who are all the haters that are yeah. questioning everything along the way. You can. I had a moment actually uh, when I had just started creating YouTube videos. This is about six years ago. Yeah. And I remember I invited a friend of mine to follow the channel. He goes, Mark, you don't know what you're doing. Why would I follow that? And I'm like, you just watch. And I still remember him to this day. I remember you. I remember you. And, and I, I let that drive me. But I am curious, was there a moment leading up to this where you're like, this ain't going to happen? I, I, I dreamt too big. Was there ever a moment? There was a moment like that where we put all of this work in and I was like, this, this is not it. And maybe I'm not what I thought I was. And it was when we spent almost an entire two months planning out the ticket sales, the launch. We put all this delicacy, you know, like the brand, the colors, the strategy, everything. Everything was so tightly dialed in. And then we opened the door. It's like, all right, everyone come inside. The food is ready. And uh, not a single ticket got sold. And it, was, it wasn't it was even like one or two tickets. It was not a single ticket got sold. We had 400 people on live. Nobody bought the ticket. And I just remember looking that. And every day for the next 100 days... My mind thought if we wanted to hit our target, it would be, we'd have to sell 10 tickets today. And every moment that a ticket wasn't sold would deem the happiness of that day for me. So like, let's say it was uh, 50 days out and we were on 500 tickets. It was like, okay, well, we need to sell 10 tickets per day. Um, and at about 50 days, out, I think we were at about only a hundred tickets sold. So it really was like seven to eight ticket sales per day. And if we had anything less than that, I had an awful day. I was like, we didn't hit our quota today. Now I'm going to have to sell 20 tomorrow. I keep up with today. And then tomorrow would go and I wouldn't hit the 20. And it was just this snowball that kept piling up, piling up. So unfortunately, it, there was what that moment when it kicked off was like, we're not, this is not going to hit. And then it, it didn't just end. It didn't get fixed immediately, which was the problem. It kept going. And it was this looming demon in the back of my head that was like, it's not getting fixed. And um, the only thing that was driving me was like, you know, we were just talking about Jim. Jim's such an OG in the space. And Jim was the fourth person that became a speaker at Creator Fest. And he didn't ask for anything in return. He didn't ask for uh, a commission or some sort of exchange of offers or anything. He was just like, hey, I, I just, I, I think you sold the story really well to me and um, I want to be part of it. And so I was like, someone like that believes in me. And right now I don't even believe in me. So they're seeing someone that I need to find. And uh, that was what we decided to do was, you know, despite everything was like, we gotta, 
I, I just want to let, I don't want to let those people down, you know? Well, and that's one of the things I got to commend you on is the community. I've interviewed probably 70 people in here and that idea of story. And when I come on a stage and he told the story, I've been following the story on Instagram. It, it, it created like this, I think, momentum, you know, but one of the things I also heard is people don't like to share their failures, but it seems like it's important to say, Hey, the failure plus the victory, it, you know, yeah. it creates that contrast, right? I mean, imagine I came on here right now and I was like, hey, everyone, welcome to Creator Fest. And I opened up with that. Then it just sets the expectation of, oh yeah, there was some company, they put it on, they spent a lot of money. I guess this event is good. Like it hits the bar, right? Um, but that was why when we did the networking mix for Thursday night, I realized that um, my presentation was the first one of the entire event. <laughs> and Sorry, I'm destroying your mic here. <laughs> My presentation was the first one of the entire event. And I realized, I was like, wait a second. So many people have been asking me what companies behind this. And so all of these guys think a VidCon or a fourth wall or a Discord is putting on this event that has tens of millions of dollars in venture capital. They don't realize that it was two kids in a garage. And that shows testament to the way we did the branding and the party. And we, we set the expectation correctly. And it's amazing they did that. But if they don't realize that it's two kids in a garage and this was entirely bootstrapped, then if anything goes wrong, they're gonna still hold us to that standard. And so I was like, we need to walk them through the pain. So I called in my editors at literally 11 o'clock on Thursday night and I was like, hey guys, we need to show the entire build out of this event in less than 10 minutes. And we went back through almost like 200 days worth of Zoom calls and we went through the daily series and that opening video that we made, that eight minute video, shout out the editing team on this. Uh, we start on that at 11 o'clock at night and we finished it at 8.54 in the morning and my presentation was at nine. So it was like down to the wire. Um, and so, you know, very long-winded answer there, but, um, you know, that was really, really the biggest important element for us to convey was like, hey, listen, like we had nothing different than anyone else. We didn't have money. We didn't have supporters. And for a long ass time, we definitely didn't have ticket sales. So... Stress, the stress, but I mean, that's part of what entrepreneurship is, right? Is, is putting that stress out there. I am curious, by the way, you're an excellent storyteller. Thank you. I've seen a ton of people. I've done probably 700 interviews and then 70 more today. Very few people understand the power of story. So I'll just give you a quick dab. Thank really, you. I really respect that. Um, what was it like the morning you woke up, the morning of your speech, you put in all this work, all this effort, all the drama, you wake up Friday morning, Creator Fest happening live, Orlando, Florida. What's your thought when you wake up? So what was interesting about that is I actually didn't wake up because I didn't go to sleep. <laughs> and I sat there and I had this vision in my head um, where I basically was, my team was working on the, on, the, on the video and my team was like, hey, we're going to get this video done. You just lean into your moment. This is your wedding day live in it. And so, uh, were you there for the intro? Did you, did you see the opening? Just a minute, but I was in here, baby. I, 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 know, I know you're in here crushing it. So I, I don't want to take you away, but there was this opening for those of you that don't know. And I'm sitting there and I'm on the stage and basically the whole thing goes black after the video finishes that shows the build out of this event. So people went from, I don't know who icon is to now I've watched icon build this entire event, nine minute video. And then the whole room goes black. And I really wanted it to be this moment where everything turns on and just sets the energy on a thousand. And I was like, I, I have this pose that I like to do and it kind of looks like this. And it's from like my favorite anime. Uh, and it was just this really cool power stance. And I basically just stood there and I redid that scene probably at least 20 to 30 times in my bedroom, just playing the song, imagining it, thinking about how many steps I was going to take left and right. And then playing the song again and just consistently doing that. And so by the time it was the 30th one, it was about 8.30 a.m. And I was like, all right, I'm just gonna go do it on the stage now. And I'm um, walking down and seeing so many people, people that I saw their creator cards, I saw their posts, I saw their Instagram stories, seeing people, we had people fly from South Africa, for God's sake. Like it was insane and walking past them and then literally like people started clapping as I was walking towards the room. And it felt like, um, it felt like being an astronaut, you know, like I'm going off to mission. And then there was so many people that watched this journey and were like, Hey, he's going like, it's go time. And uh, that was really special. So, uh, it, you know, I, 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 I can't say that I've ever experienced anything like that. Well, learned, dude, and that idea of, um, envisioning yourself there. I've heard Tom Brady talk about that. Mike Tyson talk about it. The list goes on and on and on. 
And, and that's something I think about a lot is how do I, I see myself standing on the stage, winning the Olympics, host the event. Um, so I think that's really profound. Do you read, by the way? Are you a big I'm, reader? I, I'm, I'm a bit of a reader. I read a lot of different things. And I think uh, I think a lot of people, when they talk about, when, when they mention, you know, I, I've been on a lot of podcasts before, they're like, hey, do you read? And I'm like, of course I read. But, they, but what's interesting is they usually talk about, oh, what's your favorite books right now? And I'll usually mention an anime. Sure. Or I'll mention a manga that I'm reading. And they find that to be usually interesting because usually people would invite me to say something like, oh, you know, let's talk about um, Buy Your Time Back or Four Hour Work Week or One to One Percent. You know, and those are all great books that I've read, too. But some of the best lessons I've ever learned were taught by people that never existed, you know, and 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 uh, growing up like um, I, I read I loved reading Game of Thrones. And have you ever watched Game of Thrones? I mean, of course. OK, thank God. All right. So so like for me, a lot of people, their favorite character in the show in Game of Thrones was like, um, you know, like Rob or, or um, you know, one of the Lannisters. But for me, it was, uh, do you remember Littlefinger? Of course. Yeah. So Littlefinger was this guy who had no money, no name, no heritage. And yet he became one of the most powerful guys on the entire show. But he became so powerful where he was literally manipulating kings and kingdoms and destroying armies. And what did he have? He was good with words. And that was his power. He said that he was like, my biggest leverage is that I know how to tell a story and I know how to manufacture that story. And I thought that was such a unique thing. So very long-winded answer from, from Do You Read? But I, I remember reading that book uh, and just hearing Littlefinger's speech about that and thinking like, wow, yeah, really, if you know how to tell the story, you can topple a kingdom. And I thought that was a really unique idea. Uh, no, and, and frankly, I don't always ask people if they read. Yeah. Um, but I can, kind of, I can kind of pick up when, I'm, when, I'm, when someone is a reader. Okay. And I also you read? heard, I do. I, I do. This guy's definitely a reader. <laughs> I, I also, uh, I heard this. I don't remember where I heard this from exactly, but um, it's this idea that uh, rich people read, poor people scroll. Mm. Right. Good one. And, and I just, that's always stuck with me. And, um, you know, it's pretty easy. You just pick up a book for, for 10 minutes a day and you build a habit. Um, and listen, I know you're, you're crazy busy here, Icon, but I, I, I am curious. Yeah. You're here, you know, the, the, you know, we're at the end of day two. We've still got a full Sunday. That's Sunday tomorrow. Scheduled. But um, as you kind of like s start to see things settle on Creator Fest, are you soaking in, enjoying the moment? Or are you already thinking about next year's Creator Fest? You know, everyone is asking me about next year's Creator Fest. And that was not words in my brain until about like four hours ago, <laughs> you know? Um, and everyone's like, hey, when's next year? Like, can I grab my tickets? And I was like, wow, you guys, I didn't even think that far. I guess uh, I guess we'll come back to that. Because my brain is like, I just finally climbed the entire mountain. I got to rest. I'm looking forward to rest. And then someone's like, hey, you ready to go back up the mountain? And it's like, Mwah. Enjoy, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I'm so excited. I'm so honored that everyone's so excited about next year. I think this is, my biggest takeaway is that, one, we definitely need to do this again next year. Uh, we definitely need to do this again with PodFest next year. Um, and uh, and one of the the the, the things I, I think now is my big goal is this afternoon is I, I think what I was going to do is I was going to go upstairs, kind of change into a non-icon outfit, maybe like a hoodie and just just kind of sit in the corner and just watch the fruits of all of what this did, you know, seeing the people that are now friends because that might have not been friends before, the people that will make business and partners and content that would have never done so without you know, really the sweat equity that we put into this event and, and just enjoy that and maybe get a sandwich. Love <laughs> I love that. I actually have two more, two more questions for you. Uh, first question being, um, there's a lot of Brazilian people here. Yeah. What are your thoughts on uh, Brazil and Creator Fest and the collaboration there? So I'm so glad that you asked that because my partner Patrick is Brazilian and don't worry, he'll tell you that at least three times a day. So, um, but no, uh, when we were originally designing this, um, you know, my partner Patrick is really excited about international markets because while well, being a creator is big here in the United States, a lot of people think of the idea of influencer, uh, YouTubers, creators, you know, kids want to, that's their biggest dream to be. Internationally, not really as big of a concept, right? It's very easy to get a lot farther with a lot less in other countries uh, because they, for, you know, even this conference, this conference itself is fairly rare and in other countries it's just non-existent. So in other countries, being a creator or, or being a influencer is a very, uh, very not talked about item. And so when we were talking with Patrick, what he mentioned to me was that the ecosystem, the international, the international uh, content ecosystem is starting to rise up. You know, a lot of countries like China are really paving the way in terms of new opportunities of how they do live streams, how they do community. Um, and so we were 
really trying to say like, how do we make Creator Fest not just a event that goes, focuses on bringing American creators together, but really pulls from international audience and, and really brings in uh, creators from all around the world. And uh, somehow by one random metric or another, a lot of Brazilians just coincidentally showed up. And it turns out Brazil is actually one of the fastest growing creator economies on the planet. Um, and so it was really great to see them here and see those early, uh, the, the, those early risers, if you will, just just taking advantage of the storm. Yeah. Well, it, this seems like a good place to be. Um, there's a lot of money here. There's a lot of influence here. High level is here with a, a free, shout out to Go High Level, by Dude, the way. High level, man. They they we gave them a lounge. We were like, you can do anything you want with this, and they were like, anything. And we were like, yeah, anything. And they were like, anything. <laughs> Are you sure about that? And we we're like, yeah, no, yeah, we're pretty sure. I mean, we, and man, they just, if you guys see it, they take, they literally like took over every single thing they could. They have photo booths, two different photo booths. They have a wraparound wall. They've got every pillar covered. They've got t-shirt cannons. Like it is crazy what they did with that room. I mean, wow. It's it's one of the best displays I've, I've seen at a conference. Ever. Uh, yeah. You know, something I've asked everyone here, and I need to get your opinion on. Last question. Vibes. What are the vibes like at Creator Fest? You know, the vibes are actually incredibly high, which is awesome. Um, I think that <laughs> a lot of people didn't know what the vibes were going to be for this event. And for me, I'm the type of person where, like, I get out of bed, I just do 50 push ups, and I'm like, all right, I'm ready for the day. Like, oh. And other people, like, they need a coffee and they need to kind of like ease into that. So I think one, what I realized I thought would be really important is a lot of people don't know what to expect with this event, what the, what the vibes would be. And I wanted this to be, yes, a industry and business event. And when I was selling the tickets for that, a lot of people were like, mm, that sounds kind of boring. And I was like, well, the you know, business doesn't have to be boring. It's, I'm sure you've been to your fair share of conferences. They're not boring, especially PodFest. <laughs> and, um, and so there's all these incredible conferences that, that do a really good job of bringing that energy up. And so I was like, you know what? I want this thing to feel like, like a music festival. And that's why we called it Creator Fest. Um, Oh yeah, it's right there. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so, um, like we wanted it to be Creator Fest. We wanted it to feel like a festival. So I really wanted it where it's like people come in. I mean, we brought in festival, we brought in 12 stage speakers, put them together. Two would have been sufficed. And we brought in 12 and we cranked that volume and we've got Diplo and DJ Lorenzo and all kinds of people just blasting music here, literally 8 a.m. And people were, they walked into the room and I think there was this moment where they were like, what? And then they saw everyone else dancing. And they were like, I'm in for this. So the vibes have been really high. And I think that was a big intention we wanted to set at the beginning of the event. Um, so that that worked out really well. And uh, yeah, I think I think the energy now is inspired, right? Like the vibes are now inspired. Like a lot of people are like, hey man, this was great. I'm going to go home. I'm ready to work, I'm ready to put this to action. And that's that's exactly what we wanted, you know? Well, respect, hundreds of people. By the way, this is not like one of those fake games. It's not fake. It's real. I'm here. I've spoken to hundreds of people. And uh, this is the man, the myth, the legend, Icon, pull it off. Congratulations, brother. And we couldn't have done it with our incredible, without our incredible partners, uh, PodFest. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Actually, I know this may have been our last question, but I'm going to Uno reverse this on you. And I'd actually, have to like, uh, <laughs> I'd actually like to ask you a couple questions, if that's okay. Is that cool? Yeah, that's cool. Do you want to talk PodFest? Yeah, well, I want to talk a little bit about PodFest, but I want to talk first about kind of your experience here. And sure. that's cool. Yeah. So uh, first things first, realistically, you know, we're in this little three point booth right now and whatnot. Uh, I just found out this was your first time ever actually doing a activation like this before. So kind of like what was the idea behind that? And how did we go from the original phone call with Patrick to like, hey, here's how we're going to do. And this is what this is what I think will be kick ass. Well, I mean, listen, Chris Critmosis is is the man, the myth, the legend behind PodFest. My name is uh, is Mark, and I just love podcasting. I love content creation. Every time I go to a conference, I find that that's one of the best ways to connect with people, right? From my first, that's the way I met Chris, interviewed him on a podcast. That's the way I'm meeting you, Icon. Yeah, there we are. Interviewing you on a podcast. And I started about six years ago on a cell phone. Cell phone to Lavalier Mike. Now I've got you know thousands of dollars worth of equipment. I'm sitting here. Uh, in this unique situation. So, you know, for me, it's getting outside my comfort zone, meeting people like you recording and just connecting via, via the creator economy. Yeah. yeah, yeah man. How do you think like as a, um, as a sponsor, like, how do you think like this activation panned out? What, what, what's your own self critique? Dude, it's been sick. We, listen, the, when I first sat down, it was empty. By the end, I was like, have to say, Hey guys, wait, closing the doors. We had 15 people outside the doors trying to get into this booth. 
the talk. Dude, yesterday I had someone come in and said, hey, I've got six people. They all want to schedule time with you. And I'm like, it's just me. I didn't bring an assistant. I'm just trying to rock it. But um, yeah, I mean, listen, the proof is going to be in the pudding. We've got about 70 people giving testimonials, giving their experience. And I just think it's been it's been really um, a really great experience. Yeah. Awesome, man. I guess, I guess, you know, kind of thinking about, you know, how you did this, I'm curious, what do you think would be like looking and in, looking inwards? What do you think would be the ways you'd want to up this next time? How do you think? Like, like you, you strike me as a man who always looks back and says like, here's my, you know, what I can pluck and here's the things we did great. And here's the things I think we can improve. And I'm just curious, man, like, what do you think would be like your next version of this? It would be more, you know, so we had a little bit of disorganization, right? One of the things that I really want to do is respect every single member of the audience every single member of creator fest needs to be respected felt heard and um you know there were times where i had a queue of about 10 people waiting to record in the yeah. booth so i'd want to develop a better system to make sure that every single person you show up you sit down maybe you wait five minutes um but you feel like you get a great experience um and i think that so that's i think the biggest takeaway uh the other big thing i think is um Making sure, and this is actually yet to to transpire, is making sure that every person has a great experience, not just in the booth, but what happens next. How are we engaging with them afterwards? Are we giving them a special discount to next year's Creator Fest? You know, how are we going to deliver the content in a way that makes them feel really special? Because one of the cool things that that I had noticed is we had people that sat down that didn't even consider themselves creator, but by the time they actually yeah. got up, they're like, "I I'm am in creator." It, yeah. yeah, I'm in it. Yeah, makes sense. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I definitely appreciate the feedback. How, have you gotten the chance to kind of speak with some of the other sponsors as well? I mean, actually, I think you have. They've kind of come in here and done their own interviews. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we had uh, Michael from Copa. Cocart. Cocart. Uh, we had STEM Media in here. And okay, uh, we did get STEM in. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, we got STEM in here. So, um, you know, I think, you know, I also think that's a really cool, unique experience for vendors, for sponsors. And it probably a really good way of selling sponsorship slots to vendors saying, hey, listen, you come in, you're going to get to talk on your podcast. Uh, you're going to get 4K video. You're going to get 100 clips. It's going to be well-defined. You're not going to have to wait. You're going to sit down, maybe even connect them with some of the speakers. You know, that was one of the cool things we did with Copa. So I think that's another, another like really great way of selling value. Yeah. And that brings me really in my final question, I guess, is like, you know, what would you say now that you've gotten the chance to be part of this? You know, you got the chance to talk to more of our attendees on a more intimate level than anyone else in this entire event, even myself. Right. Um, so knowing kind of the vibes of the people here in the community and whatnot, what would you say to someone who's potentially thinking about sponsoring Creator Fest next year uh, and based off the experience you've had with the attendees so far? So I think that you want to, as a sponsor, you want to come ready to engage. You want to give a, you, something unique about your, your booth, too. You don't just want to have a booth with a couple flyers up and some mints on the table. You want to have a way to bring them in because these are creators. These are people that love video, short form. They love content. They want to talk about themselves. So give them a way. Give these people a way to engage with your brand on a deeper level. Get them on Instagram tag them, offer to collaborate with them. And I think use this as a way of, of, of speaking with creators, collaborating with creators, getting their information uh, so that you can continue to facilitate that creator vibe. Because these are creators. Um, that makes a lot of sense. I guess my last, last question is, uh, are we going to see PodFest here next year? TBD, bro. Thanks. Because I wanted you to be like, yeah, in the background. <laughs> Mark, you did, a, you did a, you, that was a PR, that was a PR grade maneuver right there. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, thank you guys so much for joining the Creator Fest podcast. Uh, let, I just want to give an incredible standing ovation for our host, Mark. Thank you for having us, brother. Thank you, man. Icon. You are the man, brother.